Hey friends, how's it going? You'll notice that my breath is condensing. It's been really cold in Alberta and that's why we're sitting in front of the, the wood stove today. I wanted to address a couple of questions. Uh, we're gonna start with um, a question that we recently received on mapping and why maps are important in permaculture and regenerative farming. <clears throat> so we've been consulting for the last, uh, about the last decade on permaculture design and um, one of the first things that we do when we show up on site, <clears throat> or even if we're doing a phone call with somebody trying to help them out with their property design, uh, is to get their maps. And in fact, it's almost impossible for us to give any kind of value about how they should use the land uh, without maps. We've had clients come to us and we've tried to coach them uh, without maps because they didn't want to make the investment uh, into a set of maps for their property and we just can't do it. Um, land is complex and to understand some of that complexity, not even all of it, um, contour maps, which are basically uh, maps that show us what the elevation of the property is relative to the rest of the property, <clears throat> give us all sorts of uh, insights and information around how to put that property to productive use. When we think about land design, specifically in the context of permaculture uh, and regenerative farming, uh, it's really good to think about land design through the lens of a Venn diagram. So uh, one bubble in the Venn diagram is what you want out of the land, okay? what your goals are. And then the other Venn diagram is what the land wants to be. And so our job as designers is to figure out where the intersection between those two bubbles exist. And so maps help us to understand um, what the land wants to be, what the land does absolutely effortlessly. Um, and once we know what the land wants to be, then we can kind of figure out what a design will look like in order to take advantage of what you want to be and what the land wants to be and where that intersection lies. Um, it's pretty hard to do that without a set of maps, especially on larger properties, like anything over an acre uh, really benefits from having uh, a set of contour maps. So hopefully that answers your question. The next question was about passive solar greenhouses and where they should be placed on the landscape. Um, and so you could replace the word passive solar greenhouse with home, with barn, with the word uh, animal trials, with um, the word food forest. Um, basically, we have all these structures that we place onto a property. And part of what permaculture design does is it helps us to figure out where those structures should go relative to other structures, as well as uh, where they make most sense on a specific property. And if there's one thing that um, we see people getting wrong over and over again is the incorrect placement of structures. For example, I, I can't count the number of barns and buildings that we've seen placed in valleys. Um, well, valleys are generally very wet because water flows uh, per perpendicular to contour, which means that it concentrates in valleys and it, get, it um, disperses on ridges. This is why ridges are generally dry and valleys are generally wet. So in permaculture, we have a really simple mantra. It's probably one of the most valuable pieces of information that we deliver in a permaculture design course, which is water, access, and structures. And so that's basically our design mantra. First, we understand water, how it's flowing across the landscape. Then we, then we understand, once we know where the water is coming, then we can make decisions about access, so our roads, footpaths, and quad paths, anything where we're using to, to uh, transit the land. And then once we know where our water and our, our access goes, then it becomes really clear with regards to where our structure, structure should be placed. Um, and so what happens a lot of times is people will make a decision about the structure, but they'll ignore the other two, and then they end up paying consequences, like realizing that um, roads are really expensive to build, but also to maintain. And if you don't take into account where the water is going, roads hate water. And so you can end up putting a road in a place that gets uh, eroded by the water on a regular basis. So you're constantly having to perform the Sisyphean task of keeping your roads um, maintained. Um, and you'll never actually succeed at it because you've placed it in the wrong location. So Contour maps are the primary tool that we use to understand water access and structures. So a contour map gives us enormous amounts of information about our watershed. So where our water is coming from, where it's going to, where it's likely to concentrate, where it's and be wet, and where it's likely to be dis, um, distributed and be dry. And um, 
What's really interesting is that um, pretty much every element that you put onto a property either wants water or doesn't want it, right? So roads don't want water. And in fact, roads are essentially just roofs. And when they're placed properly, they harvest water for us. And so if we understand um, the water in our landscape um, and we know that roads don't want water, then we can choose locations that are going to be the, the least expensive to build a road as well as to maintain it. And if that location is thought of carefully, then we can add a water harvesting element below it so that the road not only becomes a, a place for cars and, and quads and people to walk on, it also becomes, it stacks functions, it becomes a water harvesting element that will enhance the water cycle on the property. Um, and so every element either wants water or doesn't want water. Houses are the same thing. Passive solar greenhouses are the same thing. Um, and so if you know whether your structure wants water or doesn't want water, and you understand where the water's coming from and where it's going to, and you understand that those structures are likely going to need access to get to them, then by layering and going in that order of operations from water, access, and structures, First, by understanding the water, the access becomes really easy to locate. It's just, it becomes, it just jumps out at the page at you. And then once you know where the access is going and you know the list of structures that you have to place on your property, there's really only one or two places typically on a property that makes sense for a house, like almost every time. So when somebody's stuck with how to get, a, where to put a house on their property, we just follow this mantra and it's like, okay, that's where it should go. Uh, same with a greenhouse. Well, a greenhouse needs to be located relative to the house because you're going to be using it on a regular basis and it has a lot of the same conditions that a house will have. Um, a chicken coop, a corral, a food forest, a garden, all of these things are structures that can be placed within the permaculture landscape and they would fall under similar uh, sets of criteria. So how do we do this? We do it with a contour map and so um, mapping is our friend. Like if you look at a really well designed permaculture property and, and so like all the details, all the contours, all the um, call outs, all the information that would go on a good plan. And then you kind of look at that and you say, how would I describe that plan in a report? How many words would it take me to actually illustrate this much information? And I can tell you because I do concept plans and I also do reports. Typically when I do a consultancy for somebody, I write close to 100,000 words in a report uh, to, to convey like 50% of the data. Um, I can't usually get more across than that because I need the concept plan to basically illustrate what I'm trying to describe in words. So maps are non-linear forms of data conveyance. Um, and we want to build maps that have multiple layers. And contour maps is one of the layers, but then we can have other layers that get put on top of that, like uh, parted aspect, um, watershed analysis, microclimate, slope, <clears throat> um, all of these things give us additional clues and help us to make decisions. And so design ends up being more a process of elimination. So eliminating the opportunities that you think you have access to in your head, when in fact you don't actually have access to them at all, you're just missing a little bit of data that um, removes that possibility from um, your design. And so if you get enough data layered on top of it, um, itself, then the design decisions become really simple. And so I find a lot of my students struggle with design because they haven't put enough map layers into their project. And so the way that we've figured out how to do this is we've built a tool called Contour Map Generator, which provides you with nine layers of geospatial data. Um, and it outputs that data into a KMZ file, which runs natively in Google Earth Pro. We chose Google Earth Pro because it's free to everybody. It used to be a paid program uh, a few years ago, but uh, now it's completely free. And it has four basic tools in it that pretty much anybody can master in a couple of hours. Um, and then you can bring those maps in and you can start making extremely powerful design decisions um, very rapidly. So if you've never used Google Earth Pro and you want to learn how to do it, we've built a really low cost program. It's about three hours long on how to use Google Earth Pro for permaculture design. And I'll leave a link to, the, to that in the show notes below. And I'd love your feedback uh, in terms of how you found it. If it was helpful for you, um, please send us a, an email or a comment or you can leave a comment in the show notes below. Um, and the other thing is that if you're looking to actually get some of these layers for your property to start making design decisions, um, I'll leave a link to contramapgenerator.com. Uh, these maps that we've made available through this new app literally used to cost us $6,000 um, for our clients to get proper 
geospatial maps for their property. And now we can literally get uh, a contour map for less than 20 bucks uh, using this app. And if you want the entire set of layers, it's a little bit more than that. Um, so uh, I'd love to get your feedback. And if you have any other questions about Google Earth Pro or contour maps, leave them in the comments below and I'll absolutely make a video about that in the future. Thanks so much guys.